Hey guys, so I'm basically going to try to make this as short as possible. I'm going to explain why uh, Archbishop or Bishop me or Metropolitan Neophytos is very confused uh, and deceived and involuntarily lying to the entire Orthodox Christian world. Okay. What I have here are prophecies that are based on the Bible, that are biblically but based, Orthodox Christian. And then here are the Marble King prophecies. And then here are the prophecies of the Russian Tsar. Okay. You're going to see there's very strong um, similarities between the Russian Tsar and the Marble King. They both are supposed to kill all the quote-unquote evil and unfaithful Orthodox Christians and make the whole world a Christian paradise on earth, supposedly, uh, for a period of time. So they're both very similar. So let's see now. Right. Okay, look, so this is about the Euphrates, right? Here, the Euphrates is depicted as a hindrance which prevented the kings with their armies from coming for the completion of the decrees of God upon the kingdom of Antichrist. This symbol is taken from the position of the ancient Roman Empire, for which the Euphrates served as a barrier against the attacks of the Eastern peoples. Uh, okay. He, he didn't say much here the way I thought he would. Um, but if you look at what St. Andrew Caesarea says, which you guys can't see because there's nowhere online to find it, I have it in my hand and I'm going to read what it says. It basically says what it says from the last video. And it goes... Um, Probably the Antichrist also will come from the eastern areas of the land of Persia, where the tribe of Dan originates from the rule of the Hebrews, together either with other kings or with rulers designated with a royal name, to cross over the Euphrates, bringing bodily or spiritual death upon people, upon some bodily death through faith and patient endurance, and upon other spiritual death through charities and weakness. That's what St. Andrew of Caesarea has to say about this Euphrates thing, right? And we know the Marble King prophecy has to do with the Euphrates. And uh, the Russian Tsar one doesn't, but here the Russian Tsar is, it just seems like it's talking about the Antichrist and how he's going to deceive Russia, even though they're thinking it's going to be a holy leader of Russia. For sure, Russia is going to get deceived because Russia is Gog and Magog with China, I believe. So, anyway, um, now here's the deal with with the uh, with the Marble King, right? Marble King, he comes from the ground. Okay, he comes from the ground. He, he awakens. Okay, he awakens. Awaken, right? The sleeping king exists, and he will awaken, right? When the Third World War takes place. And the Third World War is supposed to take place, we know, when the Euphrates River dries up. Okay? It, it even says that in Revelations, and um, St. Paisios says that, but it says that in Revelation, so that's the most important part. Now, let's see what it says about the false prophet. Okay. The false prophet also awakens and comes from the ground. Okay. Okay. So the Antichrist comes out of the sea, okay? And 
and he's going to be a man, right? We know that. But let's see what it says about the false prophet. I could find it a lot quicker if it wasn't in this format, unfortunately. It's in this format. Oh, the false prophet and his activity. Okay. He's not depicted as coming out of the sea like the first one, but out of the earth, which is the same exact way the marble king is supposed to come out. He's going to awaken, and he's coming out from underground, uh, supposedly in, like, Hagia Sophia, right? Right, let's type in Hagia Sophia. <laughs> let's see what it says here, right? Look at that. He, he must have forgot to admit to uh, mention how he, how he comes out of the ground from Hagia Sophia, which is all good, right? The light will shine specifically over a sleeping man <laughs> in the middle of the city. An angel will awake him. He will be in raggedy clothes. An angel will command the people to find him and crown him as king. Such a joke, man. What well, more of a joke can there be? Right? So, this there's nothing here, by the way. And all of these things about... Uh, and every single one of these things about... The Marble King. Nothing is based off of scripture. From all these different prophecies. Look, he's mentioning St. Methodius, right? The army officials, namely the kings, will fight among themselves about who will rule. Once Constantinople is taken, the Russians and their former... I mean, Russia? How is he even meant... See, this is how you know it's false. St. Methodius supposedly is a 3rd century saint. Russia didn't even exist as a country in the 3rd century and wasn't even known in orthodoxy at all till a thousand years later. So, for it to mention Russia, that's how you already know this is a lying prophecy. Look at that. But besides that, um, besides that, this is hilarious how they're talking about Russians when he's living in the third century. Oh my god, man. Whoever, whoever believes this stuff is, is fooled. That's all I could say. Heavily fooled. Okay. All right. So, and also what I just want to mention here is it has nothing to do and it's not even tied to the Bible in any way. Okay. It's not tied to the Bible in any way out of all of these prophecies. And the sad part is, like I have a friend, she became a nun in a Greek Orthodox monastery recently. She said all the, the head abbess and all the nuns there believe firmly that this marble king, St. John, is going to come back to life and bring the age of prosperity, of Christianity, and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that's that. Okay. And um, let's see what other similarities it has, right? And by the way, why is he coming in the middle of World War III, right? You want to know why? I just mentioned World War III now. Now all of a sudden I can't find it. Oh. My bad, I'm just trying to find World War III real quick. And now I can't find it. Great.
Okay, World War Three. Perfect. We're approaching World War Three, and those who blaspheme the name of the Christ will be put to the sword. By the way, this sounds so Muslim because Christians don't kill people who blaspheme the name of Christ. It's never happened in Christian history. The Marble King will arise and lead the Orthodox faithful to victory over their enemies. So you see, and then blah blah blah, his death will reveal the Antichrist. So check this out. You see what it says here. He's going to lead people during the Great War, right? This is so similar to what St. Andrew of Caesarea says. St. Andrew of Caesarea says that... That uh, he's going to do it, right? He goes, To cross over the Euphrates, bringing bodily or spiritual death upon people. Upon some bodily death through the through faith and patient endurance, meaning he's going to kill Christians, right? This uh, this Antichrist. And upon others uh, through charity and weakness. So, you know, it's like, it seems like an Antichrist or the, or, or the, the false prophet, one or the other, are going to be leading this great war. And they're going to be killing a lot of uh, good Christians during World War Three. Okay, so that's there's just too many similarities with the characteristics here of someone who is coming from Antichrist. Okay, um, they're saying that these are patristic uh, evidence, right? Oh, uh, oh my God. They're saying Ezekiel spoke of him. They're saying St. Methodius, see? And somehow St. Methodius know about Russia in the year 311. This is such a joke. Where? Where is Prophet Ezekiel? See, they must be just claiming that the Prophet Ezekiel said so. And then some saint from Constantinople, St. Tarasius. Okay, well, if St. Tarasius uh, had something to actually say about it, does he relate it to scripture in any way? And what you'll notice is with these prophecies from these supposed uh, prophecies from these saints, um, none of them are related to scripture, as you see with St. Andrew of Caesarea, for example, or the other saints. Okay, none of them. I've looked into these saints here and their prophecies and... I've read stuff from 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 them about the Marble King, and there's no scriptural uh, evidence to back it up. Like I'll give you an example: Saint Andrew the Holy Fool says it has to do with the eleven kings. Well, I just put something on my channel about the eleven kings from Saint Cyril, and you can go see it in the title. The eleven kings all come in the same time span, all at the same time. St. Andrew the Fool says, oh, no, they come in the 40-year time span, which is why we're going to have 40 whole, forty years of peace. You see, guys? So there's just so much holes in this, in this prophecy, and it doesn't even connect to the Bible at all. Okay? So, um, and you'll notice, too, all Greek, Greek, Greek. Okay, I, I mean, you literally, we literally just read some lines from, one line from him. I don't know where he's from, right? And so I just find something iffy about that, you know? There's no other saints from other churches mentioning it. Like, real church fathers that I've mentioned on my channel, like you guys saw. So many church fathers. And none of them are talking about anything like this. Any kind of 30 years of peace or anything like that, right? So, that's that, guys. Oh, look at this, St. Therese. The king will rise, he whose name starts with I and ends with an S. And this is Ioannis. <laughs> Yo, like, this is such a joke, man. <laughs> it's such a joke, okay? All right, now, let's check out the Russian thing, the Russian czar, and prove that wrong really quick. All right. So the Russian Tsar is talking about, okay, Oh, Russia, Russia has sinned before God. The Lord has blessed Russia so that she should give to the world what no other people have given. But the Russian people has shown itself to be ungrateful. It has denied God. 
has abandoned him, etc., etc. Okay, so this is what he says. The people itself, okay, okay. And it will put a powerful czar on the throne. God himself will point, point him out. He will be the renewer, the reformer of Russia, as was Peter. But he will be motivated by a solid and true Orthodox faith. Okay, he will chase away the unfaithful hierarchs, meaning he's going to kill them. Okay, by his intelligence, he will be a genius. By the way, that's a characteristic of Antichrist, that he's going to be a genius. By the purity of his soul, a saint, and by the force of his will, a flawless life. <laughs> and by the way, so Antichrist is said to have come from a royal line as well. A royal line, right? This is look what it says here. He will be from the of the Ramanov dynasty through the female line. So he's going to be from a royal line too. So, so many things already making him sound like the Antichrist. Because the Antichrist will kill a lot of hierarchs. And the Antichrist um, will seem like a flawless diamond. And be extremely intelligent and come from a royal line. He will be a man of fervent faith. Mind you, so with these prophecies of Marble King. And over here, um, the Russian Tsar. There's no biblical... Uh, connection to these prophecies whatsoever like they, they're, they're claiming that it's from the book of Ezekiel over here but it's not there's not, nothing that connects to the Bible whereas all the prophecies I show on my channel connects to the Bible that's how you know it's true all right so I mean there's so many points I could make about this it's it's uh, it's just too much to think of but anyway so he will be a man of fervent faith, brilliant intelligence, blah, blah, blah. In the first place, he will reestablish order in the bosom of the Orthodox Church, sending away bad bishops. By the way, when he says sending away, it really means killing, because I've read it in other prophecies. The same thing about the Russian Tsar saying he's going to kill them. He's going to cast them down, which means kill. And many, many will be sent away. Almost all and new bishops, true ones, with unshakable faith, will be established in their place. <laughs> he will be a true elect of God, obedient to God in all things. He will transform Siberia, but this Russia will not last long. When I check this out, soon after will begin what was spoken of in the apocalypse of St. John. So... You know, it says at the at the death of of uh, the the marble king, right? For example, it says at the death of him, Antichrist will be revealed. We just read that somewhere, right? Antichrist, his death will reveal the Antichrist. The truth is, what's going to happen is when people are so deceived by this marble king phenomenon in the Orthodox Church and this Russian czar stuff, when they die. Okay, it's really going to be the false prophet and uh, Antichrist dying. And they'll believe that Jesus Christ is the Antichrist after. When Jesus Christ comes after, their death is going to reveal Jesus Christ. But people will be so deceived by them, they're going to think that Jesus Christ is Antichrist. You understand how strong this deception of the coming is going to be? So... These are just some points I wanted to point out, guys. I hope it made sense. And, uh, you know, I'm going to just call it out for what it is that, you know, uh, Metropolitan Neophytos is deceived. That's going to be the title, something like that. And, you know, I know it's going to trigger a lot of people, but I don't care. I don't care because I, I, I'm really, I mean, it, it's just a joke. You know, I got I to gotta let the truth out. So, see, look, imitating the Lord Jesus Christ, he will use for establishment of authority of the Antichrist two powers, the power of the word and the power of miracles. But he will speak like a dragon that is blasphemously, and the fruit of his talking will be atheism and extreme impiety. All right, you see this, guys? Or under the apostate, the false Christ will be will perform everything through sorcery and deceit for the deception of men, so the Antichrist might be considered as God. He will be glorious, the glorious performer of such miracles and worthy of undoubted glory. 
like St. John the Baptist, who brought believers to the Savior. See? And I, and I posted that already. Okay. He will strive to place on all the outline of the ruinous name of the apostate and deceiver in their right hands in order to cut off the doing. I posted this before as well. See? So there you go, guys. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that.